All right, welcome back for the last chunk. Uh, we just want to kind of get some practice. Uh, the same way I've done practice and other things is I just went and I found an old exam question, right? So this is an exam question uh, from a final exam, I don't know, a couple years ago. Uh, so we'll just read it and we'll just kind of solve it together, right? So this problem, it was problem four apparently. Uh, they wanted you to name a certain thing. Uh, I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> this problem statement said there are two switches, uh, normally closed momentary, um, I won, and then the other one's also normally closed momentary. And so the first question was, mark how you will show them in PicoSoft. We ask that a lot, right? Um, so, I mean, this is easy. Normally closed um, is this guy. Momentary is, is, yep, so this guy on I1 and I2. I3 doesn't matter, right? So I just don't even care what you do for I3. I would just leave it blank, right? All right, so that was question number one. When we start writing this in PicoSoft, we'll, we'll apply it there. That was just the setup. <laughs> Don't worry, the problem's not over. Uh, the actual problem statement was this. Um, if I1 becomes broken, um, and then within two seconds, I2 becomes broken, uh, then you should count up by one, right? If the reverse order happens, so if you get an I2 broken and then an I1 broken, um, again, it has to be within two seconds, then you count down by one. Um, and then when C1 is positive, um, Q1 should be on, um, and then whenever it's zero, uh, Q1 will be off. So let's go ahead and open up PicoSoft. Uh, you can save something if you've got something else open. I don't even know what that was. It was probably something with counters. Uh, you can create a new file, drag over, uh, your <coughs> PLC and then what I'm going to do first just so I don't forget later is I'm going to make these types uh, the correct types right so I'm just going to go ahead and make them um, normally closed momentaries all right so now I'm ready to go with my uh, my circuit diagram see what you can do on your own uh, so we'll solve it together but see if you can uh, tackle this guy and actually play with it in the simulation on your own all right, so I'm gonna solve it with you. Um, so essentially what we've got here is we've got an I1. Um, we'll solve that first count up situation first. So if it becomes broken, um, then that's going to begin a two second interval window. There's a lot of ways to solve this. Uh, this solution, I'll solve it twice. This solution, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, um, kick off a timer that's a two second off delay. So um, as soon as I let off, which I assume I'm gonna press it fairly quick, you've got a two second window. Um, if in that two second window, so while T1 is high, if you have a, a break on I2, then what I want you to do is I want you to count up, right? Count up is easy, you just drop it in here. If it, its set point is one, right? So if it's positive, um, then it's gonna be like controlling whatever it controls. So that's that's counting up. The counting down situation is very similar, but the reverse. So we'll have a T2 controlling a, a timer two. Timer two is also gonna be an on delay. Oops, I said on delay, I meant to say off delay. Man, teacher's trying to confuse you. So I want a two second like bonus window. Like after you click it, there's like a two second bonus window. Um, and if you click the other button in that time interval, it's gonna count. So this guy, T2, is also a two second off delay. Um, and if you click uh, while that bonus window is active, if you click an I1 knot, I1 break, uh, because it kept asking for becomes broken, because these are normally closed, so if they become broken, I forgot to make that one a break, I fixed that real quick. Then what I want you to do is I want you to count down. Um, we're gonna cheat, we're gonna use our little like shortcut countdown trick, um, is if you wanna send a pulse to make it count down, um, then what you can do is this little guy. To be honest, that's a little dangerous, right? Cause you're setting up to count down and then you're instantly counting down um, and then you're turning it off. Um, but it seems to work. So despite being a little dangerous, uh, I'm okay with it. And then what I want you to do is have this counter control the queue. So let's go see if we've done anything useful with this solution. 
So what I want to do is I want to watch, I'll watch my counters here, um, and then I'll just watch this run for when the whole thing comes high. So if I hit play on this guy, so if I hit I1, then I2, um, it counts up. I'll do it again. So I1, I2, counts up. I1, I2, um, counts up. Oh, it actually counted down because I was too fast there. I1, I2, counts up. If I do the reverse order, I2, I1, you can see it's down to 2. I2, I1, it's down to 1. I2, I1, uh, it's down to 0. Um, and you can see that when it's 0, it's off. If I do an I1, then an I2, uh, then it's on. So I think that this solution works. So if I was in the exam, I would raise my hand. I'd say, hey, come over, check this thing out. Uh, it does just what you wanted. I2, I1 um, makes it go, oops, I2, I1 makes it go down uh, to zero. Cool, that's one solution to the problem. Uh, so I'm gonna save that off as my exam four or whatever it told you to make the file name. Um, I also wanted to use this as a chance to kind of tell you about the next topic, kind of give you a teaser to it. The next topic is a more systematic way to solve problems like this. And a slightly more systematic way to solve a problem like this is to think of it as states, right? So you've got like one state where you're just like sitting there and you're just ready to go. Um, and then you've got a, um, a potential up state um, and a potential down state. And so the idea is this is called a finite state machine. You can go into the potential up state uh, by having an I1. Um, the way people do broken is they put a bar on the top. So an I1 bar would take you up. Um, and then you would get kicked out of the state uh, whenever the timer uh, expires. This one, you know, you could go in with an I2 bar um, and you could come out when the timer expires. Uh, we'll kick you out. I'm going to leave off the details in here for now. Um, but I wanted to show you an implementation of this. And so um, we'll just call this the potential up area. Marker one will be on. So we'll just set a marker and says, hey, we're in this state to where we might potentially count up if we have an I2 break. Um, and then this other guy, um, you know, we're in a state that might potentially count down if we have an I1 break, right? So this kind of finite state machine, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about in great gory detail tomorrow but I wanted to give you a teaser for the topic today. Um, let's go see if we can implement this and let's see if it makes more sense to you when we actually make it. So I'm gonna create a new circuit. All right, that was easy. Um, and what I wanna do here is I wanna have I1 uh, break. So whenever I have an I1 break, what I really wanna do is I wanna go into a state. So I'm gonna set marker one as being on. Now I'm kind of like in that state. When marker one is on, it's going to be controlling a timer. Um, what this timer is going to do is this timer is going to kick us out. As soon as this timer actually comes on, it's going to kick us out. Um, it's interesting that the previous solution I used the, the bonus time on the end, which was an off delay. This one, I'm like trying to kick myself out the whole time. And then when it finally succeeds, um, it's going to come on and kick me off. This one really is an on delay timer. So, if, if it came on right away, it would kick me out instantly, right? Uh, but instead, what I want to do is, when it does finally come on, I want you to kick me out of the state. So I just want it to be a reset. So this basic structure right here um, is one example of a finite state machine. I'm going to set my, my inputs right because I made a new file here. Um, and so what we can see here is if I show the markers, if I click I1, I'm kind of like in that state, right? Um, and if you have a click during that state, I'm going to do stuff. Um, but then if the timer goes off, it kicks me out of that state. So this concept of states is very useful. And all I want to do is when I'm in state one, so if I'm in marker one, if I see an I to break, then what I want to do in there is I want to count. Uh, so that's pretty easy. There's another state, right? So if I have an I2 break, 
I want it to put me into a state as well. Um, I'll call that one marker two. If I'm in marker two, uh, then I want to be controlling timer two. Um, and what timer two is trying to do is it's very much like timer one is trying to kick me out of that state. Um, and so if I have timer one, once, once timer two actually goes off, it's going to kick me out of that state. Um, and the way it kicks me out is a marker two reset. So I know it's hard to see everything on my screen at the same time here. Um, but I've got state one completely finished. State two is still kind of a work in progress. Uh, but I just want to see, I'm going to do a simulation now before I add even more code, right? So all I really want to do is I just want to see, um, do I have my states kind of set up right? So if I hit I1, that breaks it. I'm kind of in that marker one state. You can see it stayed on for a few seconds. If I had I2, that's kind of my option. Um, I'm in that state that might count down. I've actually implemented the marker one counting up, right? So if I hit I1 and then I2, um, that actually made the counter go up. Um, oh, my counter doesn't have a set point yet. Uh, so I'm not done yet. But all I wanted to really do was I wanted to check my states. Uh, and they worked to, to put me into that state, right? Um, now let's finish this thing, right? So this counter needs a set point of one. If I'm actually in marker two, what I want to do is I want to count down. Um, so if I'm in marker two and I see an I1 break, so I1 break, I want to do my countdown trick. Um, to be honest, we can actually do this a little bit better. Instead of the countdown trick where it kind of like sends a pulse to the to the direction and the, the pulse at the same time, we can actually insert a rung right here. So I'm going to insert a rung right here. Um, and what I can do is I can um, have, when I'm in this state, have it controlling the direction for me, right? So this is showing that whenever I'm in that marker two zone, you know, be counting down. If, if there's a count that needs to happen, be counting down. Um, and then all, the, all I have to do here is I just have to have, um, if I'm in marker two and I see an I1, then count. And then last but not least, have my count control a, a Q. All right, a lot going on there. I'll make sure to print out the uh, solutions in the, in the slides. So if I run this guy now, uh, I can see that if I hit, I wish I could watch more things at the same time, right? Um, so if I hit I1, um, then I can see that I'm like in my little state where M1 is on. So if I hit I1, I2, um, you can see that my count actually incremented um, and my Q is on down here. If I hit I1, I2 again, it also counted up. So now I'm at two. If I do the reverse, I2, then I1, it counts down. If I do it again, I2, I1, it counts to zero. So I'm not saying that it's like definitely better or definitely worse. Obviously my other solution was shorter, right? But this idea of like being in a state and then when you're in that state, you can do special things, turns out to be very powerful. And our uh, video lectures tomorrow will all be all about finite state machines um, and how they can help you in PLCs and also with PICs. All right. Whew, we'll see you then. You know a lot about PicoSoft now.